Mr. Marty Show. I keep looking for something magical Some rabbit to pull out of a hat I keep hoping for something radical A spell from an old book to cast I keep looking for someone magical To make me fairest of them all I keep hoping for someone impractical to see me in their crystal ball Spin the straw into gold What does our future hold? I need to be more than magic 
logical if I am to be yours. A wave of one and unbelievable. I'm standing there at your door. I know you are more than magical just by the way things bend to your will. Never an ounce of anything theatrical. Just a smile and you're fulfilled. And you say it's all fans. It's a dull, gray summer afternoon here in Marty Land. So what we're going to do to help things make, be more cheery is we're going to make a cake. Now one of the things that we do in our family is we make cakes for everybody's birthday, whether they're still with us or not. And today's special cake is for Ma Gilmore's mother, the great Patricia Garmack, parents. Now, instead of from scratch, like I did with the cookies, I would, using a cake mix is fine from the store, and it's a lot better to do things that way. And they've got the instructions on the back. But over the years, I've sort of developed either by accident or necessity, some improvements on the instructions. It says one cup of water, I use a cup of milk. Half a cup of vegetable oil, I use gently melted one stick of butter, which is half a cup of vegetable oil to all intents and purposes. And to really make the cake nice and fluffy, it says three eggs. We'll be using four today. Now I know eggs are sky high down at the store, but it's worth it, trust me. I think you'll be happy when you see the finished product. So that's, that's how I do it. Let me start putting things together. 
melting some butter, and then we'll get running our classic Sunbeam Mix Master, or at least one that looks like the classic Sunbeam Mix Master. If you want one that has all the attachments that will make french fries and squeeze oranges, one, get out of our basement, two, good luck at garage sales and antique shops. All right, time to mix everything together. Pop open the box. Mm, I smell the lemon from this lemon EK. Wait, it be very nice. Oh, right. Don't throw the box away yet because and if you do this for years and years, you always have to look at the instructions. Okay, add the dry matter in first. Your hot but not burned melted butter. Put that in. Because we've got to get this butter cooled down before we put in the eggs. Otherwise, you're just going to have a cake full of scrambled eggs. Slowly start mixing with our good cake spatula. Slowly start mixing this. I don't have my milk. That's the best thing to cool down the hot butter before putting the eggs in. Okay, one cup of milk. Silly me, I should, like I said, keep the box handy and read the directions. Shaking up for good luck. Here we go. All right. Started the mixer on slow. We're gonna have some fun with that. Okay, trying to smooth things out here. Don't want any lumpy batter. So you can't just turn the mixer on and forget about it. You gotta keep stirring. Got this smoothed out pretty well. And the eggs now. Be careful, don't get any shells in. It might be better, really, to uh, mix up the eggs a little bit in a separate bowl before adding them, but we're just going to Mr. Moss, right? And that's why you should mix them up separately, Adam. All right, back to... Hey, want to show your support of Martin's Artist Endeavors? Buy Me A Coffee is an online site that makes supporting Marty easy. In just a few taps, you can make a payment of any amount, and no account is needed. You can also decide to become an ongoing supporter. Go to martinmccormack.com and click on the words, Support Martin. Let's help Martin keep it all capital. Okay, well, I think we're very close to being finished, except for some very, 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 very light touch-ups. But um, I accomplished a couple things I wanted to do that I, I wanted this owl to go from looking like a, a puffin on a branch, a happy, kind of kindly bird, to one that looks like it might be able to tear your head off. 
Um, <laughs> not exactly, but I accomplished that by bringing in just a little black and, and look at how it pops now. Um, it's really cool. And everything here, the foliage, it's got this really, really cool look, you know. Um, just little dabs here and there of, of areas that all I'm doing now is I'm just popping, I'm popping, I'm popping. Um, but think of all the stuff that we had to go through to get here. Think of how we had to go and lay the under, the under course, um, which you can just barely see, you know? And then we came in with a second shade, and then the third shade, then the fourth shade, then the fifth shade, and now we're just in that little realm of, of you know, what I like to call the TUs, the touch-ups. Um, still not 100% satisfied with the beak. Um, I want, I now have pretty much where I want the beak to be. Um, I just, I, I'm probably going to overbrush that with some something that's just a little bit, a little bit lighter brown, something to, to kind of take the, the corn element out of it. Though, if you examine an uh, 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 owl beak, it is fairly yellowish. But for me, I, again, the, the blue that we have in here, you get this feeling it's, it's getting late getting late in the evening. I don't know, you know, that's how it feels to me, is that, you know, I want that feeling like uh, how Polly captured in her photo, where, you know, you look, you look at this owl and this owl's just kind of been looking at you, you know, up in the branch. But um, I would say for all intents and purposes, this one-eyed owl, like I said, except for a couple TUs, a couple little tricks here and there, I'd like to say is, is pretty much finished. I can't wait to bring it down to uh, the first art showing. And um, I think that this might, you know, might sell.
What kind of pan do you use? Kind of what? Pan do you use? Uh, we'll be using some uh, actual cake pans. These cake pans are nice because once it's done cooking, pop out the bottom like that. So your cake doesn't get stuck in air. I'll show you that after a while. Alright, it says here, uh, bean cake mix, etc. The mixer on medium for two minutes. Well, I'm sorry, that's not how you get a nice fluffy cake. What I did, break it up. Might be a bit more than two minutes. We're going to make sure we have a nice, smooth, fluffy cake. Again, using milk instead of water and the extra egg. And uh, melted butter, that's what helps make it smooth and fluffy. At least that's my experience. What did you figure out why my mom liked lemon cakes? Her mom's there made made plus lemon. Yes. So how's that? Have a cake, big cat. Excess off the meters. Call the kids over and we'll clean the meters. First, we gotta get this in the oven. So, what we can do first is The trickier parts is to make sure we get even levels into each of the cake pans. That's where this cake spatula comes in really good because it will get out every bit of cake batter. are going to be. So let me get these into the oven and we'll be back with you in half hour and 35 minutes. Is it time to get them out now? Why yes it is, but first let's make sure they're done with the toothpick test. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Those look good. That one's done. There's no wet dough on the stick. As is that one. Ah, uh, another perfect baking cake baking for today. Have a look at these. See how much they're risen up higher than regular cakes? 
that you might make if you follow just what's written on the recipe. And they smell so good too. Yes, nice and lemony, but we're good. before we frost, you gotta let them cool. Yum, and yum, perfectly done. Okay. Hello, Polly Chase presenting artwork by Martin McCormick. There are many reasons to buy art. You might choose a piece for financial investment or to put the finishing touch on interior decoration. You could buy work because it speaks to you or you are a friend of the artist. And then there is art that you buy for the sheer fun of it. These pop art portraits in the Man and Dog series definitely fall into the fun category. Each acrylic on canvas measures 12 by 9. They can be purchased individually or as a complete set of four. They are a playful testament to a companionship that stands the test of time and a vast wardrobe. Check out this painting and more of Marty's artwork on martinmccormick.com. You can also email me with your interests at martyfineart at gmail.com. We are here in beautiful Forest Park in search of dessert. And here we have the Forest Park Bakery. This place has been here for a very long time and they have a huge variety of beautiful things. Look at those cakes and tarts and you can also have stuff specially made. Also good for breakfast, which I'm going to get right now. Hey, okay, here we are at stop number two. The Twisted Cookie Cafe. Lots of good sweets and treats in here. Cute. You can sit here and eat your super good treats. They have these amazing like cookie pie things, um, brownies to die for. You can have a triple berry pie cookie. Ice cream, absolutely great stuff. Okay, Mr. Marty fans, we are here at Silverland Brownie Bakery, the last stop on our dessert tour of Forest Park. And these are truly simple brownies, double chocolate. Peanut butter, yes. chocolate truffle, pistachio chocolate, apricot chocolate. How can you eat such beautiful brownies? They have brownies, three brownies, and we have just eaten our way through the dessert of the forest.
Hi, Ma Gilmore fans. Mr. Marty Show again. And today we're finishing up the cake that my husband started. It's a lemon cake. It's for my mom. She has been gone since 1996, but every year we make her a cake. So, taking it out of the pan with one of these cake pans is so easy. It just lifts out. Okay. Then, take the pan off of the platter and put it down on some parchment paper. I use a Lazy Susan for this because it spins around so I can get to all sides. Then comes the first layer. Today we're using off the, off the uh, shelf lemon frosting. Okay, we're going to make the first layers top coat. Okay, and you want enough in there so that everybody gets a taste of frosting in between each cake layer. And this is where my handy spinner comes in. And I always do this first. I don't go to the sides until later. But as you can see, it's spreading on this cool cake pretty well. Okay, now we are going to go to the second layer. Again, take the pan, it's so easy to get out. And we lift it off as best we can, and it comes off very nicely. And we center it as best we can, pushing down to make it even. Whether it's even or not, it really doesn't matter. But then we go to start the top. Now, a lot of people think that you should cross the sides. Well, you do cross the sides and you go along the top. But I find if you pull down and push across, it keeps it on the platter and it keeps them from falling off. Okay, and as we're doing this, again, we are going all around it, pushing to the sides while we get excess of the top. Okay, now because this is going to be a fast frost, we will just kind of layer on stuff. And boy, it smells lemony in here. It really does smell good. But what will be the uh, best test for how good it is is when the kids come in and eat it. Then we'll know if we've had a success or not. And each one of them knows that their birthday cake will be coming up too. Now, they decide on the flavors there. Usually it is dark velvet, red velvet cake. Or others like the lemon. Some like white cake with dark chocolate frosting, which Mike makes from his mom's recipe. And we're coming along just fine here. It's going on. And I will keep doing this until it's over. But for the finished product, the kids all like sprinkles. Now sprinkles make it festive. Too many sprinkles make it a little too crunchy for the older people. And too many also make it uncuttable. So uh, somebody used to tell me too many sprinkles. There couldn't be too many sprinkles, but I found that there are too many sprinkles. Okay, we've got a coat on this. 
we go down to the bottom. No tips for me on how you uh, frost your cake because I just kind of have the slap and go method, filling air where I can, when I can, and getting rid of the mat <laughs> that likes the sweets in here. If that was left over from my flower exhibit. <laughs> okay, we're coming on it. I know there's probably too much watching me cross the cake and pushing the cake wherever I want it to go, but you get the idea. Cakes are good. Cakes make memories. And when you make a cake for everyone every year, sometimes you end up with 365 cakes a year. That's how many people we love and how many we bake for. So, Ma Gilmore here, wishing you good baking, lots of desserts, lots of peace and love. Ma Gilmore, I bid you peace.